we're celebrating. Yes, that's right. Today, we're celebrating a breakthrough, a breakthrough in your life. I believe that God has already scheduled a breakthrough for your life. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus, your only begotten Son. And Jesus, we're so thankful that you have the Holy Spirit on assignment right here, right there in my friend's life. Lord, you have the Holy Spirit on assignment to breathe on the Word of God so that it finds its mark on our heart and our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank God. Thank God. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Faith Moves Part 3. Here we go. Faith Moves Part 3 from here to there. That's our subtitle, from here to there. Right now, you may be facing some major, major challenges. Even now, you try not to be distracted with thoughts of, well, how do I get from here to there? It might be a concern over a job, debts, or even your school. It could even be a deep concern over a child, a parent, or a health emergency that's just sucking up all the oxygen in the room. Well, how do you get from here to there? from sickness to health, from poverty to, well, just being able to pay the bills. How do you do it? Let me interrupt your concern with God's plan, God's plan for your life, because He cares for you. This matters to Him. Your concerns matter to God. You matter to God. Let me pause and pray for you right now. Precious Heavenly Father, I just bring all the cares and the worries, the doubts, the frustrations, sickness, the needs of my brother and my sister to you right now. Precious Heavenly Father, you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. We believe we receive it, and Lord, we cast all those cares on you now so that we can concentrate on your word. Amen. Amen. We've been learning that faith moves in this series. That's important right now because you need results. We need results. Genuine movement toward life, provision, help, hope, healing, and solutions. Will Rogers from the old time days, a performer, an actor, I guess a vaudevillian social commentator, he said this, even if you're on the right track, You'll still get run over if you just sit there. (laughs) I like that. That's because life perpetually is moving. It keeps moving. Yes, it moves. Do you know what doesn't move? Parked cars, statues, headstones, stubbornness, unbelief, doubt. But faith, faith, my friend, it moves. So let's do a quick review of our series so far. We've learned faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. God kind of faith is voice activated. In this age, we should be able to easily understand that. Part two revealed that you are a word faith being made in God's image, born of God, born of heaven. God used faith to move everything into existence that exists today. The six days of creation were inaugurated by the power of God speaking, you know what? His word. Now that's outcome, right? Knowing that we're faith beings and watching God use his word faith design, that captivates our attention to know everything that we can about faith. We want to know about faith. Do you want to go from here to there in life? Well, faith moves. Part three, from here to there, faith moves. At this point, let's apply God's word to our thinking on the true biblical definition of faith. We know it's a power force moving things into being, creating things from nothing, and also, as Jesus said in Mark 11, faith moved things out of our way. Look at this Bible definition of faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It's famous. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That makes me think of a recipe and all the needed ingredients sitting on the counter. Faith is like the store of all these ingredients with directions for the outcome of the cookies. Can you see it? Can you smell it? We don't see the cookies yet, but the ingredients along with the preheated oven, the accurate instructions are all telling us what's about to come into existence, right? Here's the thing. We can see in this simple Bible definition of faith, process, 
Process is a part of faith. Faith moves the ingredients into process. I've said this before in my teachings on God's word, and it bears repeating right now. God is not afraid of process. In fact, God likes and ordains process. He uses process. Faith moves the needed and invisible ingredients into process. So don't you be discouraged or afraid of process. Faith moves from here to there using process. I find some people in their haste to chase after miracles, they develop a distaste for process, even if they don't know it. They fail to see the miracle in a garden growing day after day. Process, a wheat field, process. Let me read you again Hebrews 11 verse 1, but this time out of the Amplified Version. Now faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Oh my goodness, I really, I mean, I like the King James Version, but I really like that version. I can see that. I can visualize it. Faith is the title deed the confirmation of things hoped for. And that phrase, divinely guaranteed, doesn't that just encourage you and stir up your hope for a God kind of outcome? If you've ever bought a house or a piece of property, you understand that proof of ownership is that simple legal piece of paper. You get a title deed. Without the title deed, you're just a visitor or even worse, you're a trespasser. Have you ever felt like a trespasser in life? Wishing, wanting, but never really feeling like you belong? It's like you wish you could just feel like you belonged or like you fit. You want your senses, you want your senses to lead to that feeling of belonging. But consider again what Hebrews 11 verse 1 says. It says, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. As a born-again word faith being, you can't get it. Remember, Jesus used that phrase, get it. You can't get it led by your physical senses. Now, that's not compliant with your faith design. You have a faith design. You are a faith being. Faith comprehends what physical senses just don't get. As the Rolling Stones sang, I can't get no satisfaction. It's the universal message humans admit to. It's a physical sense chant, right? I can't get it. I just can't get it. No matter how many drugs I take, no matter how much I drink, I just can't get it. We already studied in parts one and two, Mark 11, verse 24. Jesus said, you'll get it. He used that phrase, you'll get it. How? Using faith. Faith supplies the ingredients and makes the cookies. Faith moves the ingredients, the process. Faith moves the heat and the miracle into being. So what's it all mean to you? Faith moves from here to there. It could be from weak to strong. It could be from dark to light. It could be from less to more, from I don't know to yes, I know. It could even be from death to to life. But make no mistake, my friend, faith moves from here to there. You think rockets move? You think the stock market moves? Are you thinking planes, trains, and automobiles move? Well, you've not seen anything until you see the God kind of faith move the desires of your heart from here to there. We need this today, don't we? You and I, we need this so much. When Pam and I moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Michigan, we hired a moving company. Well, let, let me qualify that. We'd already started work in Michigan, so I gave Pam three reputable companies to interview back at our Nashville home for the big move. Unknown to me, she decided to forego my research and hire some good old boys with a truck. The day came, or should I say the night came, because even though our wonderful movers told us that they'd be here at three in the afternoon, it was now after eight and they still hadn't showed up. Finally, the truck arrives. And I'll be honest, 
It was like a cast for the Hatfields and the McCoys showed up. The guys were nice, they were friendly, but the object of the whole project is to get us moved, right? For about five hours, it was a comedy clown show on steroids. We had one of the guys passing out. We had another fella. He had, well, we'll call it a severe bathroom complication. The decision had been made. Our moving team was our moving team because the decision was in play. Finally, around one or two in the morning, Pam and I, we just couldn't take it anymore. So we paid them. We paid them and sent them on their merry way. They were supposed to help us set everything up, but as you can well imagine, a not so good decision doesn't age or get better with time. Oftentimes in life, you and I, we need something moved. Sometimes it's extremely critical. Partnership is key. If your partnership is based on your senses, you eliminate faith from the driver's seat. When your senses lead, the ceiling for your outcome is set very, very low. As a faith being, you now have major limitations. You've got major complications, my friend. This is why so many marriages and relationships, they fail. Partnerships steered by senses is not moved by faith. I need to tell you that again. Let me say it again. Partnerships steered by senses is not moved by faith. Jesus said it in this way in John 3, verse 6. What's born of the flesh is flesh. It never migrates into a spiritual sense. Flesh doesn't do faith. You've made a partnership of critical limitation. Unions based on sense are unable to experience the universe of God's potential. Your body and soul can never take you where your spirit being can using faith. So people feel hopeless. They, they just give up. Even if they love the other person that they're with, they just, they can't take it anymore. They give up because they're faithless. How can you be faithful when you're faithless? Makes sense, right? Faith moves because faith works. It gets results. Does that seem a little too simple of a statement to make? Faith moves because faith works. God is anti fruitlessness. If a tree doesn't produce, God doesn't lay hands on it and pray for it. He says, tear it down. Religion has this habit of tolerating what's unfruitful and status quo. God's a God of increase, growth, fruitfulness, movement. When a generation of Israel doubted God about going into the promised land, they ended up going around and around and around Mount Seir in the wilderness for, guess what, 40 years. 40 years of moving but going nowhere. Never confuse movement with faith moves. You see, you can build something for 20 years and have it all come down in one day. Just because your wheels are turning doesn't mean you're going someplace. You might be stuck and just spinning your wheels. That's what religious tradition does. It gives you a form of movement, but denies God's power for real outcome, lasting outcome. In other words, honey, you ain't going from here to there because you ain't got the wind of faith in your hair. Mm. Check out this truth from God's word, 2 Timothy 3, verse 5. For they hold to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far away from them. Why does God's word tell us to stay far away from these people? Well, we've talked about how faith partnership is key in your life. Let's go to another level. The faith agreement or partnership that you engage in will settle to the lowest denominator. In part two, we read the Mark 6 story when Jesus tried to help the people in his hometown of Nazareth and he could do, the Bible says, no mighty miracles there. Imagine that. I mean, that's just utterly astounding. You'd think if Jesus was in the room that anything, anything would be possible. Anything should be possible. So why did the people of Nazareth go with no results? Well, they, they dishonored God. They chose unbelief, doubt. Jesus tried to partner with them, but if you won't let faith work, even Jesus can't help you. You can have faith 
but you've got to let faith work. Think for a moment of how you personally pursue the desires of your heart. Let's think about this. Let's talk about this. Let me put it in a question for you. Do you pursue your desires using faith or with your senses, your human abilities? One of the quickest ways to test your trust is to look at how you manage the desires of your heart. You may remember the famous Bible verse, Psalm 37, verse 4, that says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Well, Jesus asked people what they wanted. I find desires often a window to the heart. It's the vision to how a person figures to get it. Remember, Jesus talked about getting it. Since we're on this whole moving furniture subject, let me tell you this. When Pam and I first got married, we had this bonus room that we decided to use as my studio, but we had absolutely no furniture. It was just empty, nothing. So one day, Pam came to me with this furniture store special that was, don't pay a cent for 18 months. She was all excited because her heart's desire was to be good to me. She wanted to furnish this office studio space perfectly for me. A nice little couch and a matching chair. Simple, but nice. I had been reading um, at that time, Mark 11, verse 23, about whoever says to this mountain to move, it shall be done for them. So I said to Pam, I said, Pam, let's use our faith in God to speak to this unfurnished room to be furnished with a couch set and just put the whole matter into God's hands. Let's do it as a faith experiment and see what God does. It wasn't a mountain, but let's start with a couch. I was proposing a faith couch experiment, right? Well, Pam was not impressed. No, 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 no. She wasn't impressed. She had a desire. She wanted to act on it, move on it. She wanted to put our trust in the furniture store's generous credit service. And just so you know, those 18 months have come and gone a few times since then. Pam had a disappointed look at first, but then she smiled and said, okay. She goes, let's try to mark 11 a couch. Basically, we activated our faith in God to give him room to meet our desires. Look, I had lots of experience trying to meet my needs the don't pay a cent worldly way. And it had all had that buy now, pay later stink to it. Do you know Proverbs 10 verse 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes truly rich and he adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. That's an awesome scripture. God adds blessings, large and small, but he never has strings attached. You know, the fine print that makes you regret ever signing the contract. Well, we prayed our simple Mark 11 style prayer, knowing that faith moves mountains, so why not a couch? I mean, that's much smaller. Then we did the next step. We left it in God's hands. Faith grabs God's attention, I want you to know. Faith plugs into God's power. God's a rewarder of those that seek him for help, healing, answers, strength, courage, joy, deliverance, direction, and yes, even a couch. So nothing happened the next day. Actually, nothing happened the next days or the next weeks. In fact, nothing happened for three months. At least it looked like nothing was happening, but the truth is faith was at work. Faith was moving. Yes, faith moves God's plans and God's provisions. A wealthy woman phoned us up about three months after praying over our empty bonus room. She asked if we would be interested in a brand new couch set that she didn't need anymore. We said we were interested, so how much is this going to be? She said, oh, you can just have it. No charge. She didn't know anything about our prayer. And here's another fun part of God getting involved with our little faith project. He always does better than you ask. The furniture arrived bigger. It was more beautiful. It was better than anything that we could have ever bought for ourselves. Plus, she sent a brand new coffee table with matching end tables that looked perfect for our studio. She also sent lamps along with the set. And guess what else? 18 months came and went and we never had to pay one cent because the blessing of the Lord makes truly rich and he adds no payments with it. That's my, that's my studio version of Proverbs 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord. God has that for you, my friend. God has the blessing for you. I hope this fun little true life faith story tells you one thing. God dearly, dearly loves you. How much more do you think God cares about your healing than a couch? 
What about your crisis, your dreams, your family and their protection? God cares more, more, and then more for you. God supplies every breath we breathe. So I tell you this simple story, not to make faith petty, but so that you can understand that every desire of your heart, the great and the small, the big stuff and the insignificant stuff should be in faith. Why? Because the just shall live by faith. It's a lifestyle. It's not a Sunday thing. It's a lifestyle. Jesus turned water into wine. He turned five loaves and two fish into a buffet for a crowd. Jesus cursed a fig tree when it failed to produce. Jesus helped failing fishermen become successful fishermen. Faith made an iron axe head float so it could be returned to its owner. God helped a donkey speak a warning to a prophet. Jesus walked on water. He told Peter to catch a fish and pull money out of its mouth to pay his taxes. God made Moses glow when Moses heard the word of God. Faith moved in all these instances, but they were not necessarily typical needs or typical things or religious things that we have faith for. When you choose to live by faith in God, you learn to involve God in every aspect of your life, your desires, your dreams, your needs, and your future. Believe it, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So this is why faith supersedes sense and reason. Faith is a power force, not an intellectual posture. The mind is a wonderful thing when it's put in God's order of being subject to your spirit, man or woman. Remember, you're a spirit with a mind. So if the mind tries to get in the driver's seat and direct the spirit, you're gonna have big trouble, my friend. Intellect serves, it cannot direct. Otherwise, you turn off and stall your word faith design. Having the ability to reason or to use common sense, it's not a bad thing. Your brain works for you. It's supposed to. Having an accumulation of natural understanding, that's not a bad thing. But Proverbs 3 makes it very clear that we're not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge God's direction. Why? Because faith moves from your being, superseding sense and reason. It taps a God level of wisdom. Faith never works to confirm sense and reason. Faith moves, and it moves from your spirit being, not your intellectual reasoning. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. The Greek word interpreted as sight here actually means external and outward appearance, shape, form, and sight. When you walk by faith, you're not walking with respect of the externals and the outward appearances. The form and the shape of the situation doesn't direct you, but your faith instinct is your prompting. Faith moves you through the challenges of life into heavenly outcomes. Human eyes are great. Human eyes are for natural wavelengths of light. God gave us our eyes. Our eyes don't even see color though from infrared light or ultraviolet light. Many flowers have distinctive ultraviolet color patterns that are invisible to the human eye but are attractive and eye-catching to bumblebees. The ultraviolet patterns often outline landing zones for the bees and point them toward the part of the plant containing the pollen and the nectar. It serves their purpose. Just because you don't see the pattern doesn't mean it's not there. Walking and living by faith is not abstract or random. It's that communication God uses to override all other sensory signals to give us life, to move us in life. Researchers have found that if you're weighed down or tired, distances look further to you. That's your perception. People wearing heavy backpacks perceive a steeper hill in front of them than those without backpacks. Pam and I, a few years ago, we got, we got really sick. Not go to the hospital sick, but pretty close, at least for me it was. And as we were getting better, it was such a relief to get out of the house and go for a walk. Well, we went to this path in a park we go to often, just not too far from our house. And we've been on many times and we still laugh about it today. But when we first started walking the trail after being so sick, we were amazed at how steep that first little, little hill was. I remember turning to Pam as we were walking so slow and I said, this hill is ridiculous. Who made this hill so steep? And we were laughing, but thankful that God's healing power was at work in us. You see, faith was moving. It was moving us. Maybe you're struggling right now. Maybe you feel 
angry even because you feel weak and powerless. The mountain you're climbing seems just too big. You're stressed, you're anxious. You're not praying for a book or a couch, but something a million times more important, more critical. You're concerned about a son, a daughter. Maybe your wife is in the hospital. It could be a lost job or an overdue bill, a hopeless report from a doctor about your health. You need some movement up, over, or around this mountain, or you need to have this mountain moved entirely. This is what faith in God does. Faith moves. It'll move you or it'll move the mountain. Maybe both entities need to be moved, but regardless, faith moves. It's not a game. If things are stuck, faith in God is the answer. Moses used faith. Joseph used faith to turn what his brothers meant for evil so that God could turn it for good. The woman with the issue of blood worked faith. Jesus, Jesus himself used faith. So what are you using to see your dreams come true? What are you using? to get healed, to overcome an addiction, a problem? What are you using to help your family, to truly help your family, to leave a legacy? Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, whoever has faith in God can say to this mountain and it will be done for him. Jesus died on the cross to restore us to power and authority as children of God, as faith beings. You now have faith, so you need to use your faith, work your faith to move from here to there, from here to there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we wanna activate faith in you. Not a passive whatever will be, will be kind of wait and see thing. We want the power of your blessing working daily minute by minute in our lives, in our families, in our homes. That's the desire of our heart, Lord. As Jesus taught us in Mark 11, we speak out our faith in you. Your blessing makes truly rich and you add no sorrow with it. So in Jesus' name, I speak your wonderful blessing into the life that hears my voice. Every life that hears my voice, I speak this blessing. I command the mountains of God's blessing, His wisdom, the Lord's peace, His healing power into the jurisdiction of your life right now, my friend. May your home be a place of God's abiding presence and influence flowing continually with His kingdom benefits. A mantle of protection be upon you and your loved ones right now. The blood of Jesus be over the doorposts of your life. All in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.